This video is sponsored by Dubby Jitterless Energy Blend. Click on the link in the description and use the code PACKERMAN to save 10% on any order. Hey, what's happening ladies and germs? This is the Packerman and welcome to this edition of The Fuel. Where in this episode we're going to be uh, reviewing the... Uh, if I can speak for a minute. The 2023 Baptist Health Cancer Care 200, the Homestead Miami Speedway for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. For the Truck Series, this was the penultimate race of the year for them. So the last chance to get into the championship four. <coughs> um, overall, I honestly thought this was a solid race. Uh, it wasn't the greatest race in the world by any stretch of the imagination. Especially when you consider that NASCAR seems to love these stage breaks. I mean, why did the first stage break have nine laps of caution? Can someone explain that to me? So I thought that was pretty dumb. But, uh... Overall, though, this is actually a pretty solid race. Uh, the tire strategies certainly made things interesting. And uh, shout out to Ben Rhodes and his crew chief for making that call to put him on fresh tires after the third and final caution. Because uh, before that, they were just absolute dog meat and it didn't look like, like they were going to be making the championship four. But then they put on the fresh tires in the hopes that it would run green the rest of the way. And that they would uh, snooker a spot in the championship four. Which that's pretty much is exactly how it happened. Because then everybody had to pit for fresh tires themselves. So while Rhodes was on old rubber, they were going to run him back down. But the hope was he would still be able to get like a good enough spot to get himself into the championship four. And Zane Smith, and you want to talk about just horrid luck, it seems like, because uh, he needed to win this race to get in. Looked like he was in prime position to do that, but Carson Hosevar comes out of nowhere and steals the win away. And then Zane Smith, I mean, we and pretty much anybody who was watching the broadcast could see it coming from a mile away. He was disqualified for, I think, something to do with his windshield bracings, which you could see the windshield bowing at the top on the driver's side. So, I mean, even a blind man could have seen that coming from a mile away. So that was just terrible luck for Hosovar, or not Hosovar, but uh, Zane Smith all around. He was going for his fourth straight appearance in the championship four. And it's not going to happen. He's not going to get to defend his truck series title. Of course, I think he's moving up to cup next year anyway, as is Hosovar. So, got a lot of young prospects going up to cup next year. Uh, so, I think next year's uh, rookie of the year class in cup is actually going to be pretty solid. Because you got Zane Smith moving up to Cup. You got Carson Hosovar moving up to Cup. You got John Hunter Nemechek moving up to Cup. You got Josh Berry moving up to Cup. So, next year's Rookie of the Year class, or Rookie class for 2023, is going to be stacked. It's going to be absolutely stacked. Well, actually, John Hunter Nemechek wouldn't be a rookie because he was actually in Cup at one point. And then he did a career reset. I remember now. <laughs> I forgot about. I, I forgot JHN had already spent a stint in the Cup Series. <laughs> Still, um, next year's Young Guns and Cup are gonna. Be, it's looking pretty stacked, to say the least. But uh, yeah, other than that. We had eight lead changes, two peer lead changes, only three caution flags, and they were kind of in a 20-lap stretch. 
almost 1,700 green flag passes, which averages out to 16.1 on average. And Corey Heim led the most laps at 57, uh, which he didn't need to win this race anyway. He had already won. Uh, so his uh, spot in the championship four was already locked up at this point. <laughs> the funny thing is, under the old Winston Cup format, he would be locking up the championship by starting the race at Phoenix. And that's despite missing a race because he was sick with the flu, which is insanity. That just shows you how consistent Corey Heim has been. I remember joking last year a lot of times when he was a part-time driver and he won twice. And I'm just thinking to myself, full-time uh, ride win? It was kind of half jest, but also half serious because it's like, this guy gets a full-time ride. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And lo and behold... He's contending for the championship. Like, the dude has talent. And evidently so does Carson Hosevar because he won his fourth race of the year. Um, definitely been a little rough around the edges, especially with last year and I think at the beginning of this year. But uh, he's really cleaned things up here in the latter half of the year. And he has four wins to show for it. And he's competed for the championship. So, um... Your championship four is Corey Heim, Carson Hosevar, Ben Rhodes, and Grant Enfinger. And I gotta feel bad for Nick Sanchez. He came up one point short of making it into the championship four. He'll have more opportunities, obviously, because he'll be back next year. Corey Heim will be back in the Tricon truck next year. So there'll be more opportunities to come. For those guys but um yeah i thought this was a solid race i mean not really much to complain about so my final rating for the baptist health cancer care 200 at homestead miami is a six out of ten What's happening ladies and germs? Thank you for watching tonight's video. If you're interested in sponsoring the channel, there is a link to my Patreon down in the description box below. Otherwise, hit like and subscribe if you want to continue watching great content like you saw today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, this is the Packer Man, signing out.